The United States is known to have some of the most impressive ships in its arsenal, and the USS Zumwalt definitely makes the cut. Being a guided missile destroyer, the USS Zumwalt is the lead ship in the Zumwalt category, and probably the first ever ship named after Admiral Elmo Zumwalt. With a myriad of stealth capabilities featured in this destroyer-class ship, Zumwalt is the epitome of what we can call a technological masterpiece. This is the history behind one of the coolest looking and most technologically advanced ships in the entire world, the USS Zumwalt. If you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more just like it. Being named after Admiral Elmo Russell Zumwalt Jr., the ship pays tribute to one of the highest achieved U.S. Navy officers. He had the privilege of being the youngest man to serve the United States Navy as the Chief of Naval Operations. He became the 19th Chief of Naval Operations and played a significant role in the United States military history, especially during the Vietnam War. Designed and constructed to fulfill multi-mission capabilities, the USS Zumwalt class is unlike the previous destroyer classes in the United States Navy's arsenal. While the previous destroyer classes were designed with a primary motive of catering to deep water combats, the main purpose behind its construction was to facilitate ground forces when it comes to land attacks. Moreover, with added capabilities to successfully defend against air, surface, and submarine warfare, it makes it one of a kind. Zumwalt is armed with two remarkably progressive advanced gun systems, which serves the strategic purpose of firing long-range land attack projectile. LRLAP was supposed to serve the purpose of a range of land attacks and ballistic projectiles. However, it was the only munition that the AGS could use. It had a whopping range of approximately 100 nautical miles when fired from the AGS. Although LRLAP was supposed to be a key component for the ground force support, its procurement was cancelled in 2016 with no further plans to replace it. Because the Zumwalt class cannot offer support for the naval gunfire, it has been repurposed to the surface warfare class. During the year 2001, the DD-21 program was reduced in half by Congress as a part of the SC-21 program. In order to save it, the new procurement program was named DDX and was heavily reworked. To cater to the initial funding allocations for DDG-1000 USS Zumwalt, it was carried out under the National Defense Authorization Act of 2007. Later, during February of 2008, a contract worth $1.4 billion was awarded to Bath Ironworks to execute full-rate production for the destroyer-class ship. The construction officially began a year later, on the 11th of February, 2009. In July of 2008, a construction timetable was organized for General Dynamics, according to which the USS Zumwalt was to be delivered in April of 2013. Furthermore, the target date for it to meet her initial operating capability was set in March of 2015. A few years into construction, it was realized that the planned completion and delivery for the vessel would be delayed until 2014. During the construction phase, the first section of the USS Zumwalt was laid down on the 17th of November 2011 on the slipway at Bath Ironworks. By this time, the fabrication was almost 60% completed. Even though the naming ceremony was organized on the 19th of October of 2013, it was later cancelled because of the shutdown experienced by the United States federal government. The mighty vessel was then finally launched on the 29th of October 2013. The quest to construct a new warship was carried out by the US Navy and the industry with an aim to turn the concept into reality. The ship was planned to be constructed around a pair of 155mm advanced gun systems. Unlike the traditional guns that were previously being used and fired shells based on a ballistic trajectory, complex engineering was poured into invigorating the idea behind the USS Zumwalt's gunning mechanism. By making small adjustments, the engineers were able to develop a system that shoots the bullets onto the target. Even though the 6-inch shells being used did not pack the same level of intensity as the 16-inch battleship shell, LRLAP ensured that the target would get hit 
every single time. The advanced gun system would guarantee that the shots fired are up to 10 rounds a minute while simultaneously adjusting the bullet's trajectory, making sure that several bullets land in the impact zone. The USS Zumwalt is known as an engineering brilliance that strengthened the United States Navy's arsenal. Unlike outmoded warship hulls that feature the bow angled downward towards the waterline, the destroyer ship was designed with a tumble home bow that angled outward towards the water. The gunning mechanism for the two advanced gun systems was strategically designed to hide the 31 and a half foot long barrels until the moment of firing. This also helped in reducing the turrets to two metallic lumps on the ship's forecastle. Featuring a single trapezoidal tower, the majority of the ship's superstructure was encased in a single unit. This included mast, bridge, antennas, radars, and other electronics too, helping to reduce hundreds of surfaces and facets to six flat surfaces. This is what allowed the USS Zumwalt, the 610-foot-long warship, to have the radar signature of a small fishing boat. In January of 2014, the USS Zumwalt initiated its preparations for heavy weather trials in order to decipher the consequences of high winds, stormy seas, and adverse weather on the ship and her instrumentations. The sea trials also included tests for vertical and lateral accelerations and pitch and roll. These tests culminated in the acceptance and builder's trials which later resulted in deeming the ship ready to be delivered for the U.S. Navy tests. The first commanding officer for the mighty USS Zumwalt was Captain James A. Kirk, who gained a lot of media attention upon being named the first commanding officer for the ship. The major reason for the media attention was because of his name, which was similar to that of Star Trek's character Captain James T. Kirk. The mighty destroyer ship departed Bath Ironworks on the 7th of December 2015 for sea trials which allowed the Navy and other contractors to operate it under rigorous conditions. This would later help in determining whether Zumwalt was ready to join the fleet as an actively commissioned warship. During one of the sea trials on the 12th of December 2015, the USS Zumwalt reported to a US Coast Guard call for assistance for a fishing boat captain. The call was for a medical emergency at 40 nautical miles from Portland, Maine. Due to the condition of the deck, the Coast Guard's helicopter was incapable of hoisting the patient from the fishing boat. This is where Zumwalt's crew used their 11-meter rigid-hulled inflatable boat to get him transferred to the destroyer. The patient was later transported to shore by the Coast Guard's helicopter and then to the hospital. The official acceptance of the USS Zumwalt's delivery was carried out by the U.S. Navy on the 20th of May 2016. However, in September of 2016, a seawater leakage in the ship's auxiliary motor drive oil system was detected. This problem caused the ship to be taken off the water for repairs. Later, on the 15th of October 2016, it was recommissioned to the U.S. Navy in Baltimore during Fleet Week. In October of 2020, the USS Zumwalt successfully completed its first live fire test of the Mark 57 launch system. With the multiple test fires and camera angles, we get an amazing glimpse into the power and stealth capabilities of this ship. The USS Zumwalt lost its propulsion in the port shaft on the 21st of November 2016 while passing through the Panama Canal. The route was from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, leading to her home port in San Diego. The reason for the lost propulsion was because of the water that had intruded in two of the four bearings connecting the ship's port and starboard. Both the drive shafts failed, which caused the ship's lock to strike a wall in the canal. Not only did it cause minor cosmetic damages to the ship, but Zumwalt was also left handicapped and had to be passaged through the Panama Canal via tugboats. The repairs were carried out at Vasco Nunez de Balboa Naval Base near the Pacific end of the canal. After the repairs were done and dusted, the ship continued its voyage towards the naval station San Diego. Upon arrival in San Diego, it was realized that the leak was through the lubrication cooling system, while the reasons behind it remained unknown. It was assumed that the reason might have been because of the transit with tugboats. However, later in April of 2019, USS Zumwalt departed from San Diego port for its first operational deployment in the Pacific. 
During this patrol, the ship visited Ketchikan, Alaska, where the crew was able to conduct stability trials in stormy seas. The ship also went to Pearl Harbor, which marked the first ever visit of a Zumwalt-class destroyer to Hawaii. The United States Navy later accepted Zumwalt's delivery in April of 2020 for more sea trials. The USS Zumwalt has always been the embodiment of excellence and the epitome of the war legacy of Admiral Elmo R. Zumwalt Jr. It is a perfect amalgamation of cutting-edge technology and versatility, allowing for sustained operations whether it is in the littoral or land attack. It has been recognized for its capability to operate as an integral part of combined and joint expeditionary forces. Considering its multi-mission design and littoral capabilities, the USS Zumwalt is a globally deployable asset to the fleet and any combatant command. To see more videos similar to this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one.